In the world of animal legends, there are some that are stranger than fiction. The story of cocaine bear is one such tale that sounds almost unbelievable, but is very much true. This bizarre story has its roots in the 1980s when a young black bear accidentally ingested a large quantity of cocaine and subsequently died. However, the story of the bear's demise and its association with the drug trade would soon take a life of its own, leading to a lasting legacy that has captured the imaginations of people across the world. The origins of the cocaine bear can be traced back to a small airport in Georgia, where a small airplane carrying over 40 packages of cocaine crashed in the woods on September 11th, 1985. The pilot, a man named Andrew Thornton II, together with an accomplice, had been attempting to smuggle drugs into the country. Thornton was a convicted drug smuggler and a former U.S. narcotics agent, so he was not new to the smuggling. However, he did not factor in the fact that 40 packages of cocaine would be too much for the for a Cessna 404 Titan. By the time he figured it out, he was already losing control of the plane, so even though he had dumped his cargo in effort to save himself, he was never able to regain control of the plane. He had to put the plane on autopilot and then eject from the plane together with his accomplice, but Thornton fell to his death because his parachute failed to open. As for the packages of cocaine, which were all in one duffel bag, by the way, they landed in the surrounding woods. And unfortunately, the bag was discovered by a local black bear who was probably drawn to the scent. Nobody knows when exactly the bear ingested the cocaine and what exactly happened immediately after. But what is known is the local hunter discovered the dead bear a while later, but didn't report it. In fact, it is recorded that three weeks passed after the hunter discovered the bear before a game and fish agent caught wind of the bear's unfortunate demise and informed the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. But at this point, no one knew what killed the bear. On December 23rd, 1985, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, who had been investigating a drug smuggling ring, found a, the bear's body and took it to the Georgia State Crime Lab. And the cause of the bear's death was soon found out. The bear had ingested an incredibly large quantity of cocaine. Thornton was reportedly carrying about 75 pounds or 34 kilos worth of cocaine, which was worth $2 million. So it is assumed that the bear had consumed that much because the bag was empty. There is also a probability that some of the locals decided to cough themselves. Anyway, the medical examiner said that the bear's stomach was so full of cocaine that there was absolutely no way it could have survived. Interestingly, only three to four grams of cocaine actually made it into the bear's bloodstream at the time of its death. Considering how rare an occurrence this was, the chief medical examiner from the Georgia State Crime Lab, Dr. Kenneth Alonzo, didn't want the body to go to waste, so he had the bear's body taxidermied, and then sent to the Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area. For some reason, the taxidermy body got lost, but after many years, it resurfaced in a pawn shop and was then purchased by country singer Waylon Jennings. The bear, now ironically named Pablo Escobar, resurfaced in Lexington, Kentucky, in the Kentucky Fun Mall after an exhaustive search, where it still resides today. That's pretty much the entire story of Cocaine Bear. But the Cocaine Bear is now more than just a bear that was in the wrong place at the wrong time. The story of Cocaine Bear was picked up by the media and quickly became the stuff of legend. Pablo Escobar's demise and the sheer quantity of cocaine it had ingested made it a symbol of excess and the dangers of the drug trade, and the story quickly became a cautionary tale for those involved in the illegal drug market. Over the years, the story of Cocaine Bear has taken on a life of its own and many different versions and interpretations emerging. Some have suggested that the bear was intentionally fed cocaine by drug smugglers, while others have claimed the animal was targeted by law enforcement officials as part of, the, of a drug bust. However, there is little evidence to support these theories, and most experts agree that the bear's death was a tragic accident. Despite the lack of hard evidence, the story of Cocaine Bear has continued to capture the public imagination. Not too long after the story broke, Blake Christiana, a member of the music band Yarn, wrote a song about the whole unfortunate event. They titled the song Cocaine Bear, and the group has performed it a number of times, much to the delight of their fans. However, they never actually recorded the song, at least in, not until recently after being inspired by the production of the Cocaine Bear movie. The Cocaine Bear movie, just called Cocaine Bear, as directed by Elizabeth Banks, tells the story of the bear's death and explores the cultural impact of the legend, as well as the wider issues of the drug smuggling and its effect on wildlife. The movie tries to fill in the details that we don't know, which includes what happened between when the bear consumed cocaine and when it died. From the trailer, you can immediately tell that the movie will be the stuff of nightmares, not necessarily because it's a good movie, but because there's a lot of blood and gore. Basically, Cocaine Bear, as depicted in this movie, is high on drugs and thirsty for blood. And the more time the drug stays in the bear's bloodstream, 
the more aggressive and murderous the bear gets, which isn't exactly the life that the actual cocaine bear was about. In fact, that kind of outcome is practically impossible, regardless of how much cocaine an animal ingests. I mean, the actual cocaine bear ingested a lot, and there aren't any reports of the poor thing harming anybody. It's more likely the bear to be scared than aggressive, especially considering that bears are generally scared of people in the first place. Now, of course, it could attack people out of fear, but most likely not in the way depicted by the trailer. A bear that is high on cocaine would most likely only attack someone who's trying to attack it. Doctors have also mentioned that the chances of a bear getting addicted to and craving more of an addictive drug that they just encountered are really low, which also reduces the chances of that bear turning into a bloodthirsty animal. Of course, we can look at the actual story of cocaine bears to get an idea how things would actually play out. We might be missing a portion of the story, but at least we know that there weren't any reported drug-fueled bear attacks. Anyway, the movie started production in 2021 and is set to be theoretically released on February 24th, but it's interesting to see how just the trailer has served to bring Cocaine Bear's story to more people and probably even a different generation, even though a number of creative liberties have been taken. Many people were shocked by the fact that the movie is inspired by a true story, especially the part about a bear getting high on cocaine. And hopefully all these people decided to check out the actual story. However, some have criticized the movie as over-sensationalizing the bear's unfortunate story. The big issue that some critics seem to have with the movie is the fact that the bear is portrayed as being violent after consuming cocaine. The actual bear situation was a very unfortunate one, so it's kind of sad that a movie based on its story portrays it as a bad guy. That said, we all benefit from bearing in mind that the movie isn't exactly a retelling of cocaine bear's story, it's inspired by the story. Aside from the movie, though, people have criticized the sensationalization of Cocaine Bear's story in general. Many are not comfortable with the bear's story having been turned into a warning of some sort. Critics have pointed out that the bear's death was a tragic accident that was caused by human actions, and that the animal should not be used as a symbol of a drug trade or a cautionary tale. However, the story of the Cocaine Bear continues to resonate with people across the world, and its enduring legacy is a testament to the power of storytelling. Whether viewed as a cautionary tale, a symbol of excess, or a simply a bizarre piece of animal folklore, the story of Cocaine Bear is one that is likely to endure for many years to come. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and a comment. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and hit the notification bell so that you never miss a video from us. See you in the next one.